It's the bombshell news taking everyone by surprise. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. I'm Tucker Carlson. And if you don't, you're going to get to. Um, today's guest is... Tucker Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you. Tucker Carlson, the one and only independent American journalist brave enough to visit the Russian president whilst at war with Ukraine and Andrew Tate whilst under house arrest in Romania. He was Fox News host's most popular host for over 10 years and a New York Times bestseller author. In today's video, we will show you why there will never be another Tucker Carlson. But we must first uncover who Tucker Carlson really is and what made him rise to the top of journalism. Plus, we will show you how he became Fox News' most expensive anchor ever. Who is Tucker Carlson, really? Tucker Swanson McNear Carlson was born into a Republican California home. His father was an American journalist and his mother was an artist. Unfortunately, Tucker's parents got divorced when he was only six years old and he never saw his mother again. With Tucker now under the full custody of his father, he attended the boarding school College de Le Mans in Geneva and he eventually was kicked out for reasons he has never shared. Eventually, Tucker obtained a secondary education from St. George's Boarding School in Switzerland and a Bachelor's of Art in History from Trinity College in Connecticut, despite being dyslexic. Tucker also met his wife, Susan Andrews, at Trinity College. She has given him three daughters and a son. Susan was the headmaster's daughter. This pressure definitely would have helped him prepare for the challenges he would face later in life. With this unique childhood, Tucker was already one in a million, and after graduating, he interestingly decided against going into journalism. With the backing of CIA, of course. The organization you wanted to join back in the day, as I understand. We should thank God they didn't let you in. And Putin is correct. Tucker initially tried to join the CIA straight out of college, and after being rejected, his father advised him to pursue journalism, as they'll take anyone, and soon Tucker started his career as a journalist, which would change the trajectory of his life forever. Who made Tucker rise to the top? He began by working as a fact checker for the conservative journal Policy Review, and then worked his way up the ranks to become an opinion writer for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette a democratic-biased journal. These experiences allowed him to understand both sides of the political spectrum very early on in his career. Tucker then landed his first hosting role on national television in the year 2000 after nine years of working his way up from the bottom of the journalism industry. Join Bill Press and Tucker Carlson in the spin room tonight, 11 Eastern. Tucker managed to publish a book titled Politicians, Partisans, and Parasites. My Adventures in Cable News. While he was hosting at CNN, he later found himself in the spotlight for his writing and was forced to defend his words publicly. Riley's success is built on the perception that he really is who he claims to be. If he ever gets caught out of character, it's over. That's right. I, I, I say before that that, you know, Bill Riley's really talented. He's more talented than I am. The book is on Amazon with over 255 star reviews, with one reader describing it as unbelievably funny and saying that tears of laughter rolled down their cheeks while reading it. So it's clear to see that Tucker had a way of engaging a reader and communicating his ideas excellently early on in his career. Tucker's final year working for CNN was again one of a kind, since he managed to host a show for PBS at the same time. From Washington, Fearless Television, Tucker Carlson, Unfiltered. Tucker Carlson. An estimated 55 million... Tucker stopped both his CNN and PBS roles in 2005 to begin working for MSNBC, which is short for Microsoft NBC, as this media giant was once partially owned by Bill Gates. Here he landed a transformative role, hosting his own show, The Tucker TV Program, for the then nine years old broadcasting channel. It's incredible, you could go through the whole list. I literally expected him to say Hillary in 08 in the end. I mean, every single line is like, I've heard it all before. During Tucker's time at MSNBC, he had another unique, unrepeatable experience when he was invited on Dancing with the Stars, which required him to take four hour ballroom classes every day. Despite this brutal practice routine and being partnered with a professional, he managed to be eliminated in the first round. I'd be more nervous dancing, I think, than I was in Beirut. Cha cha one, cha cha two, cha. When it comes to talker and natural ability for dancing, uh... Carrie Ann Inaba. Five. Len Goodman. Four. Bruno Tonioli. An awful mess. Three. 
He was also featured in cameo appearances in Season 1 of Hardball, and undertook reporting assignments in the middle of war zones. Tucker later recalled some of his wartime experiences with Dave Smith. It was an AK-47. Well, I actually had an AK-47 already, not fully automatic, but just in my range. So I knew how to operate it. But yeah, you're required to carry it. That's how out of control it was. So, And then a buddy of mine got killed there. A journalist was killed there. A guy called Mike Kelly was a really great guy. Unfortunately, it is true that Mike Kelly died in a Humphy accident whilst reporting in the Iraq war. Now, while Tucker didn't express any clear signs of PTSD or go to any type of therapy, there was one thing that struck him. Children a mother and going to war with a them? mother gets her legs blown off and, and you think beautiful. that's a good thing. And I lost control at the table with this guy and said almost exactly what I, I think it's disgusting. And it's not because I, I, I don't think women should be defending our country, not because I don't love women, it's because I do love women. They're yeah. above that. We should def we should be defending our women. Yeah, I don't know how supporting women getting their legs blown uh, exactly. off that's become the, exactly. the pro-woman exactly. position. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I came back to story. Washington and I was like, and I did an interview with the New York Times. And I said, I cannot believe I supported something like this. This is yeah. totally evil what we're doing. And I've never moved from that position. I lost all these friends for saying that. Whatever. I'm not, I don't want to talk about myself. Continue talking about myself. But yeah, so you no, asked. I just, in that, well, I, because I've just I've heard you say several times that your trip over there, you know, like turned you against the war. But I would never like heard you really like say what specifically it was. Celebrating the death of a yeah. mother. So far, Tucker's early career was very unique, giving him a perspective most other news hosts couldn't grasp which became evident later on in his career when he was at Fox News. Now, before we move on to the most significant stint in his career and explore why he was fired, we must first look at the infamous website Tucker started with his former college roommate, Neil Patel. The Daily Caller is a right-wing news and opinion website. The rumor is, is that the Daily Caller was launched as the conservative answer to the Huffington Post, since they received $3 million in seed funding from Foster Fries, the Republican businessman. Tucker's role here lasted 10 years, and he eventually sold the entirety of his ownership to Neil Patel. The values of his shares at the time was not disclosed. Before Tucker launched this website, he made the biggest move of his career. The year was 2009 when Tucker joined Fox News, and this was where he certified his name in TV news hosting history forever. Initially, he was hired as a news contributor, but he made frequent appearances on many Fox News shows, such as The Red Eye with Greg Outfield. Tucker, as bizarre as this whole idea is, don't you love the writing in gender in like gender politics? Oh, how how like it, it goes even beyond parody? It's it so <laughs> florid it pulsates. <laughs> yeah. and really, it, it, it's a measure of what a rich country this is that we indulge morons like this yeah. who believe gender is a social construct. Tucker appeared on the special report and even hosted and produced a show titled "Fighting for Our Children's Minds," where he freely expressed his conservative views on America. Tucker's penultimate role at Fox News was as the co-host of Fox and Friends. Where yet again, he displayed exactly why there will never be anyone like him. <laughs> He's really asleep. <laughs> I don't think we're being good co-hosts right now. <laughs> mm. Good to see you. <clears throat> Welcome to Fox and Friends. It wasn't too long after this when Tucker started the role we all know him best for. Nobody in journalism was like Tucker Carlson while he was at Fox. During his time, he had an average of four and a half a million people tuning into his show every night. This makes Tucker Carlson tonight the most watched cable news program ever. For reference, NBC's Lester Holt averages just below 950,000 views per day, and CNN's Anderson Cooper averages just below 750,000 views per day. This means that Tucker has more than double his two biggest competitors' views combined. Consequently, he was the highest paid out of all of them, earning a whopping $20 million a year, while Lester Holt's annual NBC salary was $10 million and Anderson Cooper earned $12 million a year from CNN. We will now first take a look at 10 of Tucker's best moments as the host of Tucker Carlson Tonight to explain why he managed to have such a lasting impact on the public. To begin with, Tucker displays why it's become a well-known fact that no one else in the history of primetime TV could start and close shows the way he did. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight. Sometimes you wonder just how filthy and dishonest our news media are. Great way to end the week. Yeah. Truly, that was a great segment and 
was grateful that you came on and I'm especially grateful for the pie. Thank you for having me. Tucker would always speak the way he wanted as a free speech activist, and he would bring anyone on despite the circumstances. Uh, thanks to you both very much for coming on. Uh, John Paul McIsaac, just to you first in the obvious question. So here, you really are the little guy in this case. You're literally a small business owner and you're being threatened by the family that runs the country. He literally brought on Hunter Biden's laptop repair guy and his lawyer mid-trial and used such derogatory terms when describing the president's son. Lifelong crackhead who's fighting you know, a million different battles on a million different fronts and doesn't appear to have a job can afford Abby Lowell and a stable of other attorneys. This is clearly an effort by the Democratic establishment, by donors, to crush you guys. He also had the respect to bring the richest man in the world at the time onto his show and the confidence to ask such a direct question. You've heard people say we should just blow up the server farms because there's no way to, once this gets rolling, there's no way to slow it down. What do you think of that? Well, the, the, the really heavy duty intelligence is not going to be uh, distributed all over the place. It'll be in uh, a limited number of server centers. Tucker also displayed his unique ability to capitalize on controversy while it's hot. During the Black Lives Matter protests, where he interviewed the most controversial activists at the time. So you made reference to the White Lives Matter t-shirt, mm -hmm. which you brought out at Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. Why, wh why did you do that and what did it mean? You know, he was the only journalist brave enough to call out other news networks he previously worked for. It may surprise you to learn that open race hate forms much of the substance of that channel's programming. These are the geniuses who believe Salvadoran immigrants want to be called Latinx. They can believe that because they don't talk to Salvadoran immigrants, they only talk at them. So they have no idea that the average Salvadoran has social views that are so terrifyingly right-wing, they would be banned on Twitter instantly, assuming Salvadoran immigrants actually use Twitter, which most of them don't because they're smarter than CNN anchors. No one else will call out the vice president the way he did without remorse. Richard Nixon was competent. He had skills, he could do things. Kamala Harris doesn't and she can't. Kamala Harris is totally incompetent. She has zero skills, she's never done anything. Harris can't redecorate her own office. She tried recently and she made it uglier. Tucker always had a unique way of addressing national issues. You might have wondered, just to pick one among so many examples, why hundreds of thousands of your fellow Americans seem to be living in squalor on the sidewalk. How'd that happen? These are the so-called homeless. Drugs have destroyed their lives. So where'd those drugs come from exactly? And why is no one asking? It's safe to say one unique aspect that aided in Tucker's rise to the top was his cunning wit. An act really of wanton cruelty committed against defenseless television viewers. Last night, CNN subjected its tiny audience to what it described as a climate change town hall. The thing went on for seven hours. That's a long time. In fact, that's so long that climate predictions made at the start of the evening could have been proven wrong by the end. An entire species of polar bear might have become extinct by the third commercial break. It's a long time. Tucker has always been a believer in conspiracy theories, as he is a free speech activist and doesn't just regurgitate common opinions as he criticizes other presenters of doing. Now, even though Tucker has had great things going for him, it wasn't always a straightforward journey for him. Fox News is still currently the most popular cable news network in America, and it's undeniable that Tucker's 17 years of hosting at Fox is a major reason behind this. It was a huge controversy when Tucker was fired from Fox News in April 2023, causing Fox News' stock to decline by nearly $1 billion in market value. Before this, he got caught up in a few conspiracies and sent a few messages he may now be regretting. During a show in 2018, Tucker found himself at the front line of a corporate battle when he made another bold statement about immigration. This is insane. It's indefensible, so nobody even tries to defend it. Instead, our leaders demand that you shut up and accept this. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Tucker's words here caused many advertisers, such as Pacific Life, Land Rover, and 20 other companies to pull their ad slots from his show. Only 18 months later, a similar situation arised. This time, however, the topic of discussion was the Black Lives Matter protest. In no normal country would that be allowed. It would be put down immediately with force. That's why we have police. You can't allow that, because if you do allow that, people get killed. It's because a bunch of entitled anti-social lunatics broke things for no reason, because our leaders allowed them. This time, 
The likes of Disney, Papa John's, and many other massive companies pulled their advertising from his show yet again. This wouldn't have affected Fox News as bad as it may have seemed, because the ads were only pulled from Tucker's slot. And Fox News has had other hosts cause advertising boycotts before. These boycotts continued to create a separation between the major companies in America and Tucker, which ultimately reinforced his claim that the Democrats manage and control these corporate conglomerates because everything is a political battle at its root. Despite all these controversies, Fox kept Tucker running his show. I mean, he was bringing 4.5 million viewers each night, making Fox a substantial amount of money even with less ads running on his show. Some of the controversies Tucker found himself in escalated especially in 2019. Former Playboy model Karen McDougal is suing Fox News and Tucker Carlson for defamation after Tucker Carlson claimed last year that McDougal, who had an affair with Donald Trump that she says lasted for about a year, but Carlson accused her last year of trying to extort the president and threatening to ruin his life. Now this must have been Tucker's way of showing his support for Trump. Luckily for him though, the case was dismissed in 2020, due to a federal judge saying Tucker's comments were merely opinion based and not statements of fact. Tucker's comments sometimes caused greater problems. I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting mm. ballots, with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. Let's just say it, that's mm. true. Listen, I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the, you know, white replacement theory. No, no, no. The great replacement theory goes that the elites of traditional white countries want to replace the majority of white people with immigrants from third world countries, who they hope will permanently vote democratic and be more obedient. Tucker isn't the first person to bring up this theory as this was originally written by Renaud Camus, referencing his home nation of France. Initially, Tucker faced mild scrutiny from other news channels, but in late 2022, Tucker really got scrutinized for supporting this conspiracy because... In May 2022, a domestic terrorist murdered 10 black people at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. The alleged shooter wearing full body armor and tactical gear, targeting people of color. This is an absolute racist hate crime. Before his attack, the Buffalo shooter released a manifesto on Discord, largely centered around a conspiracy theory known as the Great Replacement, a fantasist notion that there's a shadowy plot to replace white people in Europe and the US with non-white immigrants. Many argued Tucker's promotion of this theory indirectly caused the attacks, and Tucker then found himself in the middle of a legal battle only three years later. This time, it was over much more than an affair and had significant consequences. After Trump's defeat in 2020, Fox aired comments that would later come back to haunt them. Massive and coordinated effort to steal this election. The electoral fraud that would be uh, perpetrated through electronic voting. They used the machines to trash large batches of votes. These statements were aimed at the infamous Dominion voting systems, claiming they had colluded with other voting system companies to rig the elections against Trump. As you can imagine, this sparked huge controversy, and Dominion Voting Systems gave Fox News a $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit. Fox initially fought off the lawsuit by filing for a motion to dismiss on the basis that their pundits were simply using their First Amendment right to inform the public about newsworthy allegations of paramount public concern. Comments made on Tucker's show were key pieces of evidence Dominion used in the lawsuit. As a part of discovery, Dominion uncovered many dialogues between Tucker and the Trump White House. They also uncovered messages between Tucker and other Fox News hosts, mocking Trump's advisors and disparaging Trump himself. Dominion used this to argue Tucker and his fellow Fox News hosts knew the allegations made about election fraud were false, but chose to act maliciously and reckless anyway. In the midst of this legal battle, Tucker found a way to add fuel to the fire. Holy shit! <laughs> 10 hours! That slimy little motherfucker sitting across from me. Oh, you're the best. This leaked video may have cost him his Fox News career. The comments he made were aimed at a lawyer working for Dominion after he sat through a 10-hour deposition with them. And after much more discovery, a text Tucker sent to Laura Ingram admitting, Sidney Powell is lying by the way, I caught her, it's insane, was a key piece of evidence against him. After moving to summary judgment with the case, being a trial with opening statements ready to be read out, and the jury all seated in the courtroom with attorneys prepared, 
the lawsuit was settled. In the end, Fox News paid over $780 million to Dominion Voting Systems. The settlement occurred on the 18th of April 2023, and everything went back to normal. That's it for us for the week. We'll be back. By the way, the entire episode of Let Them Eat Bugs, not quite as good as pizza, streaming now on Fox Nation. Use the promo code ORIGINALS for 30 days free. And we'll be back on Monday. In the meantime, have the best weekend with the ones that you love, and we'll see you then. Until... It's the bombshell news taking everyone by surprise. Tucker Carlson, Fox's top-rated host, their biggest star, gone without warning. The announcement came from Fox in a brief statement declaring that Fox and Carlson have agreed to part ways. We want to thank Tucker Carlson for his service to the network. Shortly after this news was announced, another lawsuit came Tucker's way this time from a former colleague of his. The popular host is also being sued by former Fox producer Abby Grossberg, who accuses both Carlson and Fox News of creating a hostile work environment. Abby Grossberg didn't waste any time after hearing the news of Tucker's sacking. She filed a lawsuit against Fox and made $12 million out of it when she forced the news networks to settle. Private texts from Tucker to fellow anchors criticizing the Fox executives were also uncovered during the Dominion case. If all of this controversy, advertisement boycotts, and settlement fees was not enough to get Tucker fired, then there was one more comment he made that would be sufficient to finally tip the tide against him. Carlson's text, published in full by the Times, was sent the day after the January 6th U.S. Capitol attack and was a reaction to a video clip of an assault that occurred weeks earlier of three Trump supporters beating up one lone person. The text read, Jumping a guy like that is dishonorable, obviously. It's not how white men fight. Yet suddenly I found myself rooting for the mob against the man, hoping they'd hit him harder, kill him. I really wanted them to hurt the kid. I could taste it. Yet again, this was uncovered in the Dominion Voting Systems lawsuit, so it's no surprise that Tucker was fired only three days after the settlement. Interestingly, CNN's Don Lemon was sacked the same day too. However, he got a slightly better send-off, as he didn't cost his news network nearly $1 billion. CEO Chris Licht thanked Lemon in a message to the company, adding Don will forever be a part of the CNN family. Lemon tweeting a different take on his sudden departure. Don Lemon got told he was let go for his misogynistic comments such as, I'm Nikki Haley is in her prime, sorry. When a woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. What are you that's, not Wait. I, that's not according to me. Prime for what? Uh, it, it depends. I mean, it's just like prime. If you look it up, it'll. If you look, if you Google when is a woman in her prime, it'll say 20s, 30s, and 40s. Don Lemon and Tucker Carlson have continued their careers and started their own podcasts on YouTube and X, respectively. Tucker has over 2 million subscribers on YouTube and over 12 million followers on X, compared to Don Lemon, who has over 150k subscribers on YouTube and 1.5 million followers on X. Tucker has also since interviewed the Russian president. Do you think? NATO is worried about this becoming a global war or a nuclear conflict? At least that's what they're talking about. He also sat down and interviewed the most Google searched man on the planet. What a trip this is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is like. This confirms that even Tucker isn't hosting for a news network, as he is still in a league of his own. Tucker's appeal to his followers is greater than any other cable news network ever. He has always spoke his mind, making him truly one of a kind. He's become way more than a journalist by doing things nobody has ever done. I wonder how Tucker would feel under a fellow free speech maximum's presidency. Good thing we made the video, what if Joe Rogan ran for president? Click here to watch.